be we may be joined by some others as as the time goes on um but i guess we can kind of make a start um so welcome to the mla and ma landscape architecture open day um so just to introduce who's here um, my name is Sandra Yukana. I'm the admissions tutor for the landscape architecture program. So if you place an application with us this year, um, you'll be coming into contact with me, hopefully um, throughout this process up until the point that you possibly enroll. Um, I'm also joined here today by two of our uh, students. Um, so maybe I'll just quickly hand over to them to introduce themselves. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette. I'm currently in Studio 4. And I'm Ruby. I'm currently in Studio 8. Great. Thank you so much. And they're in the bar at the moment against lovely backdrop for concrete wall <laughs> somewhere in a studio space. Um, so that's great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we are having a few technical difficulties. Um, we're going to give it a go to uh, as, as intended, which was to share a presentation. Apologies if it doesn't work. Uh, what we will do is film that portion of it and send it to you. So I'm just gonna see if it will work. And if not, we have a backup plan. Um, so let me give it a go. So I'm wondering if that is working. Yeah. Okay, so let's try this and apologies for the the kind of PDF interface. Um, as I say, the PowerPoint is giving us some issues today, but let's let's try. So um, yeah, so today what we were planning to do, what we will do is hopefully um, introduce both the MA and MLA programs. Um, so we'll talk a bit more about the program structure. This is um, consisting of the design studios, the history and theory modules, ecology and technology, and also practice and skills. Um, then we'll go through some of the program resources and the kind of Bartlett studio culture, and we'll wrap up by kind of talking through the admissions process, sharing some student work, um, and then we'll have a kind of live Q&A portion to answer your questions. So hopefully you know that the Bartlett is part of University College London. We're a kind of top ranking um, renowned university. We have a number of different faculties and departments, um, but you know, a world renowned architecture school, which encompasses a lot of different subjects. Um, and really we're very research driven and the Bartlett has a long standing history of being quite speculative and experimental. And hopefully this comes through in, in the work. So we're also committed to landscape based education, which aligns with the school's ethical ambitions. And this is to support sustainability and deal with real world challenges such as biodiversity loss, climate change and ecological crisis. To give you a bit of information about um, the kind of founders and, and co-directors of the program, if you don't know them already. So Professor Laura Allen and Professor Mark Smelt, they run a, a kind of design and research practice called Smelt Allen. And here you can see some of their works and their, their research and published book as well. Um, so they've been kind of pioneering landscape based research for, for many, many years at the Bartlett, over 20 years um, before founding this program. So they, their work kind of focuses on these dynamic relationships between natural and man-made landscapes and how this can kind of be revealed through design projects and design research. So to talk about the kind of different streams and the formation of the, the program and how the different modules overlap, as you can see here from this extract in the kind of program structure, in MLA year one, so MLA is the two-year program, MA is the one-year program. In the first year, um, yeah, you'll you'll be covering this these three different streams, which are history and theory, uh, landscape, environment and technology, and then landscape design, and they kind of overlap at different points in the year. You'll also have skills and practice modules. These are not um, kind of assessed modules, but they're there to kind of supplement your knowledge and provide you with a um, some more kind of supplementary skills and and things to enhance your experience here. Then in the second year of MLA, 
to, again, you'll be covering these three different aspects. Um, you'll have a more ambitious design project, which goes on a bit longer um, alongside a, a landscape thesis. So you can see how these modules kind of overlap at the beginning and then start and stop at different times as well. So to start with design, um, so this is really makes up the kind of bulk, uh, the bulk of your 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 time here of the program and the assess modules and the way that design is structured is through these different studios. So we have uh, this year from studios two to eight, um, the studios each kind of come up with a different brief every year. They all they're all taught by different people. Um, you can see some of their names and please feel free to look them up. We have a mixture of landscape architects. We ha um, we have researchers, academics even illustrators, um, you know, a, a big mix of people which helps to inform the different methodologies and types of work um, within each studio. Um, so yeah, you can see some of the briefs that they've been dealing with this year and these kind of get refreshed and updated every year in order to respond to kind of um, uh, new landscape phenomena or different environmental issues that they, they wish to address through design work. And each studio has its own kind of methods. Obviously, um, yeah, your tutors will be experts in different things. So you should pick the studio that, that most appeals to you through the ways that they work and, and the brief and the things that they're um, wanting to tackle. So you can see here, um, there's various different approaches such as looking at workshop techniques or kind of on-site sampling, a focus on um, natural materials or on-site testing. There's collaborative drawing, prototyping, digital surveying. So lots of different approaches. And just to say um, the students also define those approaches. So you'll never be told exactly what you have to do, I hope. Um, you're kind of open to interpret the brief in your own way and, and kind of develop your own ways of working, which will be supported and, and enhanced by your tutors. And to give you an idea of what some of the design projects tackle, so this is a bit of a dump of words, but you can kind of see um, some of the issues that that the students tackle through their design projects. So things like ecosystems, hydrologies, um, landscape representation, life cycles, it goes on and on and on. And hopefully you'll be adding to this list with your own interests and um, initiatives of things you want to tackle. And as said here, this goes hand in hand with your theoretical and history um, issues, which are also linked to your environmental work. So you can see these three three things coming together quite closely to um, help you form a really unique unique position uh, across the one or two years of study. So to go into just a little bit more detail, what term one will kind of look like for you. So this is when the design modules start pretty much from day one. Um, so what's expected is a kind of, if you're in MLA one, things will be quite introductory. You'll be developing uh, and testing. Um, so whether that's techniques of different landscape representation, uh, processes of making, you'll be trying different things out. Um, it will also be for both years, an introduction into the studio's methods and themes. So you'll kind of get used to, to that and begin exploring what, what that means for you. And really kind of setting yourself up with a, a research question, a kind of inquiry that, that you'll then follow through throughout the year. Then in terms two and three, um, you'll have a kind of specific uh, uh, site that you've selected either from your your previous studies or from your field trip and this will really be a way of you to kind of address and pinpoint your area of interest and you'll undertake research about that site and then you'll begin to iterate and propose a kind of um, larger scale design projects that will explore um, things in greater depth um, you'll use, you'll kind of apply your knowledge from your environmental and ecology modules and explore some of the theoretical ideas as well by applying this to this larger scale design project. Then through history and theory, um, so you can see here, um, this is the lovely Tim who coordinates the history and theory module. Um, so you'll start the year by kind of 
having a number of different lectures. You'll go on kind of walking lectures on sites. You'll visit archives in different buildings um, where this module will, will be kind of delivered to you in these different formats. Um, so the difference across the two years is that, um, again, the MLA one, it's kind of an introduction to lots of these concepts, which you may not have come into contact with before. And then by year two or in your MA, you'll form a really unique critical position, um, which will then be expressed through this kind of more ambitious thesis project. Um, so yeah, again, seeing how you're, you're kind of building up to that, that final thesis project as well. And you'll also have the chance to choose a seminar, um, which is led by a different um, person. You can see some of the topics here. Um, so again, that will be reading text, discussing um, different topics. You'll get kind of one-on-one -on -one feedback from a thesis supervisor in your second year as well, or in your MA year. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different approaches and topics that will hopefully appeal to you from kind of looking at different ruins or, or utopian visions for landscapes or different to topographical practices um, and so on. And these kind of, these were from last year, I think, but I think they might be refreshed each year as well, depending on kind of who's teaching or who's involved. So hopefully there's something there that will interest you. And some of the thesis topics as well. So you can see on the right, these are extracts from the thesis um, from the students and they tend to be quite visual. So lots of students uh, incorporate their design work to show how some of these ideas have actually been applied. Um, they cover a real range of topics to put, depending on your interests. So whether it's about kind of small scale urban interventions versus yeah, utopian and democratic landscapes land reclamation in a particular area, uh, site processes and, and interactions and flows and materials, uh, sound and landscape. So it's really quite varied. And this is the bit where you, you truly have, have a kind of um, the option to, to really express yourself through this thesis as well. Then the ecology and technology modules. Um, so for year one, this is called um, LIES, the shorthand version, Landscape, Inhabitation and Environmental Systems. Um, again, you'll be introduced to lots of things. If you're coming from a different discipline, you might not have um, dealt with some of these things before. So you'll start by looking at different environmental systems. So things like air, ground and water, landscape inhabitation, landscape realisation. So building up again to introduce you to things and then hopefully you'll be able to apply those to your design as well. And initially you have a kind of review of a case study, building up to a design project report, which goes hand in hand with your design proposal. So you can really go into more detail on that, um, demonstrating your knowledge of this module, but applied to your design project. Then in MLA uh, year two or MA, um, this is really about specialising or like showcasing what you're most interested in. So rather than kind of showing a, a general knowledge, which you would have already done, this is the kind of opportunity for you to show how the particular part that you're interested in, how you can kind of go into a lot more detail on that. So a, a project specific topic explored in detail, and that will again go hand in hand with your design project. And again, this module um, consists of, obviously there will be lectures for you to learn about all those different topics, but there's also many visits. Um, so again, to, to various uh, locations around London and beyond, um, to kind of case studies of landscapes or uh, really interesting, meeting interesting practitioners or people that are working with landscape maintenance or preservation um, across a, a number of different typologies. So whether that's kind of um, agricultural or woodland or um, coastal or kind of public space, um, these are really, really amazing to, to kind of, again, get you out of the studio and the lecture theatre and, and listening to people who are, you know, on the ground, on site um, and dealing with some of these things. And this is a recent visit um, in term one to the Thames barrier, where you can see how some of the classes were, were 
delivered um, and the types of specialists that the students come into contact with. And then practice. So we have a dedicated practice coordinator, Kelly Duran, who's there to offer you postgraduate career ad advice. So um, he's given kind of talks and sessions with students about the different routes to chartership in the UK and the EU, um, kind of advocacy, publishing, teaching, different scales of project work you might want to undertake in the landscape discipline, different sustainable approaches to practice, paths to practice, and also what opportunities there might be for you if you want to go into research and academia. So hopefully that will give you a kind of um, good framework for starting to think about what you might do when you complete your studies. Um, you'll also have support from a practice tutor. So alongside your two design tutors, you have a practice tutor who comes in specifically to support you kind of one on one with your design project to make sure that you're getting the kind of technical support that you need with specifically with your environmental modules. And just to say, we have full accreditation from the Landscape Institute uh, for both of these programmes. So this will support you in your pathway to sh chartership should you choose to work in the UK. We also have a skills uh, module. Again, this is not assessed. It's a kind of supplementary way of delivering skills to you. Um, so these are kind of stretched out throughout the year, either kind of weekly or, or, or fortnightly, depending on the time of year. Um, and you'll be, they start very introductory. So beginning with things like 2D and 3D drawing and building up to different workflows, more specialist techniques such as 3D scanning or GIS or, um, and then very specifically with some of these masterclasses such as how to work with uh, stone and rock structures, mineral territories. Um, so there's lots of different analog and digital skills there for you to kind of absorb and then choose how to apply those within your design projects. Just to go over some of the Bartlett resources, so we have an amazing suite of workshops, the Be Made workshops, um, which you're kind of free to use um, in different ways. There's people who are amazing at kind of handcrafting, but there's also people working with things like robotics and much more advanced digital things so there's a nice balance there of things should you choose to go down either route or, or use a mix of both. Um, there's Flimmel Park which is a mixed-use woodland centre um, not far from London so lots of the studios have been undertaking work there um, whether that's setting up installations or taking samples from the woodland um, that's also a really uh, good thing for the landscape architecture program to have that as a resource and then various digital tools for site analysis and also we have our field trips as well which are both in urban and rural locations so maybe just to go over some of this landscape specific equipment as you can see here um, hopefully this will support you in things like site surveying environmental analysis and research and remote ecological monitoring and here are some of the pictures, pictures from the recent field trips. Um, so depending on the studio, you'll go on a different field trip, whether that's being deep in the woods to, to visiting natural landscape phenomena, extreme landscapes such as mountaintops or visiting various sites that look into material processing or some of these experimental case studies around the country. And then we have a lecture series. So um, various landscape practitioners are invited in to give kind of um, different talks about their own approach um, on landscape architecture and how they work. We have design reviews where we have invited um, guests to kind of come and assess and, and, and look at your work and offer you advice. And then we have finally managed to resume our physical exhibition, so the Autumn Show. Uh, so you can see some pictures here from the Autumn Show that just passed. So this is on for a week and it's open to the public at the start of term, showcasing all of the landscape architecture, current and graduating students show uh, work. So it's a really, op really great opportunity for you to kind of broadcast what you've been working on. 
We also have the digital show, which we'll show you um, in a second. So it's a kind of archive of uh, digital works, which can, you know, is visited by people all over the world. It's a bespoke digital exhibition space. And we have a physical and digital book, which you can see in the corner there. And it's also available on issue. If you haven't checked out these resources, please do, um, because it's the kind of, it's the best way to see uh, what's going on on the program. And we have our Bartlett Instagram. Um, if you don't follow, please do, because this is where you'll see students doing takeovers. Uh, there's the lovely Blair giving a presentation of her work. Um, this is where we broadcast public events, talk about studio culture and field work and so on. Um, so it's a really great resource, which is constantly being updated. Um, so please do follow. And then finally, just to talk about some of the, um, the guidance for 2023 entry. So we are open for applications and we will close at the end of March. Um, you can see some of the entry requirements. Um, so please check them carefully um, in terms of the English language, the academic and the deposit requirements. We also have a design portfolio components. Um, so what we're looking for there, and I'm sure there'll be many questions about that, is to really kind of summarize your your um, academic or professional experience and communicate it visually to us um, as best as you can. So through uh, some of your evidencing, some of your concept development or your, the range of projects you've been taking, um, how you can communicate ideas and process and narrative and also your skills to date. So we're not assuming that you'll, you know, know absolutely everything maybe you come with something quite specialist so we'll really talk and work with you to to see how you'll be able to apply that and develop that further in your studies um but yeah that's a, an important part of it and um we can talk more about that shortly in the q a and just to say this is the kind of process so you'll start by applying um to ucl for either program, this will be reviewed and all your kind of CV, academic record, statement and references will be checked. Then you'll have a design portfolio request from the Bartlett. This will be reviewed by myself and you'll either you'll be selected for an interview, hopefully, um, and then you'll have a final decision from us um, in approximately eight weeks. It may be quicker, it may be slightly longer, depending on the time of year, but what we advise is please, please try to get your, your application in as soon as possible for the kind of the best chances of being processed quickly and hopefully receiving a response. So that's everything from us presentation wise. I'm very glad it worked. Um, so I will stop sharing now. Um, and we will move on to the next portion of the open day. And this will be talking through um, some of the student projects. Well, I won't be talking, our lovely students will be talking, but I'll just share the screen and hope this works. So, can you see that? Yeah, God, this is very smooth sailing. Um, I'm very happy. Okay, so this is our Bartlett Autumn Show Space. If you haven't been on it, here is the link up here. Maybe, um, uh, maybe we'll also put it in the chat just in case you've missed it. So this is a really great collection of the student work of the current students and the ones that just graduated. And the way to navigate it is um, by kind of scrolling up and down, you'll see all the different studios. So you can see at the top landscape architecture, and then it says the design studio, and then you can kind of click to go in. So today we're gonna be talking about some of the work which um, Annette and Ruby were in in the studios last year so if I can find it is chronological of course <laughs> but if I can find studio two so maybe I'll invite Ruby now to start by um introducing the studios brief and we'll move on to talking about some of the work. Hi everyone um, we're in a studio space so sorry for kind of the background noise but hopefully you can hear us okay mm -hmm. um so uh, Studio 2 last year focused on terrain vague sites, and terrain vague is kind of a fancy way to say abandoned. And so the, um, the tutors kind of asked us to walk around London and find abandoned sites that uh, had some sort of interest to us. Uh, and so every student kind of picked a different area. Um, and 
someone that kind of like came into London for the first time to live, it was kind of a cool way to start the year off and learn about the city um, and just kind of like walk around and get to know it, but also um, kind of look at it through a lens of landscape. So um, we were kind of charged throughout the whole year to focus on the same site. Um, some other studios kind of bounce around, but um, it was kind of nice because uh, we had a bit of consistency like through all of our design projects. So like design project one, two, and three were all kind of like one big thing rather than being separate. Um, but we were kind of challenged with the question of how much design is enough. And so our tutors kind of really pushed us to think about what was actually necessary um, to do on site, if anything. Uh, which was really fun. Uh, the, the tutors are also really different. So Canon um, is a practicing landscape architect and he's written kind of like several books uh, within the kind of field. And Alex is an urban designer um, who works at BIG. So we had kind of this like kind of big macro view in some tutorials and then really, really kind of clued in and got like into the details as well. So it was, it was a good mix of things. Um, it was a very kind of like, uh, regimented process. So throughout the year, we were kind of taken through um, in a in a very systematic way, which I think for somebody that doesn't have a background in landscape, it was helpful for me to kind of like start in that way. So um, the first term was really about research. And um, we weren't actually uh, even allowed to do any design or any sort of like um, intense drawing until we had done kind of that initial research. Um, and we were doing that in like really visual ways. And then the second kind of like part of that was like a notational design. So could we take kind of like abstract shapes or abstract ideas and start to kind of figure out and move those things around. And so we didn't even start our quote design process until about January or February of the year. Um, and then we started to really dig into drawing and representation and like kind of um, uh, speculative uh, kind of ideas. Uh, I did want to talk about, since you're on Eden, uh, mm -hmm. Sandra, I'll start we'll with him. him. Yeah, we'll, we'll okay. talk with him first. Um, so Eden uh, was one of the students um, that was in our MLA too. So his project spanned the whole, the whole year um, and they tend to be a bit more speculative, um, but he kind of focused on a site that uh, was like an old pumping station and how that site could then be reimagined to maybe like this kind of theme park, almost like Disneyland-like, but with a landscape lens. And um, his his project kind of wrapped around this, uh, he ended up creating this actual like map of the site. So if you were to like go and like, you know, experience this, you'd actually have kind of like a way of, of doing it. And he had like several, yeah, there's the map. He had kind of several different elements that would change. Um, or actually work in the landscape. So I think there was like a, a bicycle that you could ride that would power like the restaurant or something, but it was kind of like funky ways. And then he built these really cool models kind of like extracting the different layers. Um, so kind of like what's there, what he was proposing and then kind of pulled out certain things. Um, and he was using like 3D printing and um, laser cutting and, uh, and then these really beautiful kind of endscape models that he was doing in uh, Rhino. Um, I think. Great. Okay. Yeah. I'll move on. And then we'll look at K. Um, Where am I? Oh, it's the Museum of Climate yeah. Change. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So K, um, K was looking at this like idea. She was looking at a site that was really close to Eden, but like almost just touching. It was a pretty big site um, and it was like totally abandoned, but um, she was actually interested. The orange circle in the middle of this model is kind of this museum of climate change. So how could you kind of like put people in this museum maybe today that would like kind of make people feel like it would feel like in 50 years or a hundred years. So could you kind of like step into a room in this museum and all of a sudden it's like really, really warm and like really uncomfortable and really humid. Um, so that kind of like idea in the middle of this, uh, this park, she was using like a lot of layering techniques, a lot of laser cutting and um, 3D printing as well, and trying to figure out kind of like where everything fit together. Uh, she was also kind of um, 
she really dug into kind of the biodiversity of the site. So how could you kind of re reintroduce species or potentially like remediate the soil so that it could handle plants that might not live there today, but could live there in 50 years, 100 years or so on when the kind of like climate is getting warmer. Um, she did these really beautiful kind of il illustrations. Um, I think also kind of her process is starting in Rhino and then kind of doing drawovers. Um, so yeah, that's Kay. Brilliant. And um, my project was a bit different, but um, I was focusing a lot on kind of design representation. I have a background in graphic design, so I was um, kind of interested in how the graphic kind of sign background and the landscape can kind of bridge. So I focused on these two um, docks. There's a lot of docks in London, um, these kind of like royal docks that are completely abandoned um, and started kind of like layering information the best way that I kind of knew how. Um, and there's just like so much kind of historical data that you can find in a place like London because it's all recorded, which is kind of amazing. So they have all the old maps and all the old kind of illustrations and things like that that you can go off of. I was using the um, technologies and I actually built like a like a table that then I kind of built this light box and the light box kind of helped me like layer a lot of those visuals together in, in sort of a way that I could see everything and then ended up kind of like using all of that research to then design um, like what that site might look like. And my site was much smaller than everybody else or Kay's and Eden. So I was looking at really, really detailed rather than kind of like master plan type strategies. So I think that's about it. Great. Thank I'll hand it over everybody. to Annette. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I, was, I just wanted to say, um, no, it's great to see three different approaches to the same brief. Obviously, you can see a kind of theme in your work that connects them, this idea of the notational and how that can be a very expressive way of revealing different things about the site. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that gives you guys a good insight into how three different students can work within the same studio um, with different approaches. So thanks a lot. So I will leave this room and go on to Studio 4. Um, yeah, I'll hand over to you, Annette. Thank you. First, look into the studio brief that we have last year. So we are looking into world within worlds. So uh, mostly the the idea is like how some of the ecological elements in today was being transferred in like bubbles that is uh, to like unlikely from an unlikely space to like London. And that's how we all started. Uh, some of us like look into like uh, natural elements like uh, plants and animals and some somebody's like look into like raw materials like copper, coal and everybody have a different starting point. And, our studios like evolved from our initial research into like finding our own focuses and then like looking into the landscape of extraction, display, and sharing. So it's like everybody have their own take on what they find interesting from this like initial idea of like a bubble of landscape. And yeah, that's how we like transform like our and develop our own interests. And for Cat and Duck, uh, Katia is a practice landscape architect, so she brings on really practical uh, ideas and knowledge for us. Whereas, like Doug is a really uh, is an illustrator himself, and he's like really great in conceptual design. So he's like bringing on uh, really speculative ideas for us to inspire us and to develop our own design interests. And we can move on to the first project that is great. by Yuki, and it's right here. That's very convenient. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, since I mentioned that everybody start with a different point of interest and for Yuki, she start her year with the interest of bees and however, like through her research, she thinks of, she find out in her project, agricultural land is more interesting and she look into the common land in UK, which is a really hit topic of uh, agricultural practices and she's looking into Lincolnshire, which she made a really thorough and psych analysis and understanding the land use, the land history there. And then she moved on to uh, starting to design different strategy of how to uh, restore the landscape, the agricultural land and the common land through flooding uh, mechanism. And she looked into different aspects of the land and she developed a really deep timeline for this process of uh, restoring the farmland with uh, 
flooding and common, the idea of a common. And it's, she also situate this project in the, uh, in the current government uh, strategy that is uh, applicable to the agricultural land. So even though it is a really speculative project, it is a project with deep, uh, with a really concrete context and it is somehow maybe could be implied in real world. So she made these series of uh, a model that is implying the decision-making through this uh, models, how could the recommend and also how could the flooding mechanism help and push the design process. So. Uh, and her project itself is more like a, a, a design of a system and design of a framework that pushed this uh, process of rethinking the common in uh, Lincolnshire. Amazing, great. Yeah. And we can move on to the project of Na, and she's like in a different context. Uh, Na started with looking into a kind of knotweed that is uh, in fading in, uh, this is the second one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Next to it, yeah. And that is her starting point. And she find out this kind of uh, weed is really invasive to land because it corrodes the land. And then she start looking into land in itself with this uh, specific geological character characteristic of chalk peak. So it's like looking into abandoned chalk peak. And then she's like finding out ways how to like restore it and also emphasizing the uh, environmental importance of this site. So she have like developed this series of really intensive uh, drawings and to like speculative of how this landscape could be restored and how could different activities being in, uh, reintroduced in this abandoned site. So uh, it's like through this different gardens, the landscape, and it's like a really deep series of uh, processes that help to reactivate and also reclaim this abandoned site. Yeah, and she also made a really beautiful model at the end that is like her, her idea of how this beautiful chalk peak could be that um, helped to like re-engage the whole community at the same time. So uh, for her, she's like driving from a drawings perspective to like the very end of like finishing the model, uh, finishing with a beautiful model. Amazing. And great. For my project, I, I started with studying a tree that is in London. And then I discovered the topic of uh, preservation in nature. And that's how I come into the topic of temper temperate rainforest in the UK. And I did like thorough an investigation of like the temperate rainforest in the UK, the site of it. And then I tried to look into like designing a framework that allows uh, the restoration of temperate rainforest in UK through a really a more systematic method and it's like how to engage community at the same time. So I try to focus my design in the uh, Brecon invaded moorland. So it's like more site specific and also like limiting my ambition for the project itself. And I developed a series of like multiple scales um, design system and also like more small scales of interventions to build up a big framework of it. And to uh, at the same time, it's like a really deep uh, timeline and vision. It's like trying to look in how this restoration process could be done through uh, step by step, and also how to engage with the community. So these is a series of illustration that I did to uh, to illustrate the whole uh, restoration process that is like from the really beginning, from uh, maybe like a farm that is having a tree nursery to the very end of like building it into the landscape. So, um, and our studio like to focus on a really deep timeline, like envisioning like 100 years is really speculative. So um, we try to bring the characteristic of landscape that is involving different seasons and also is a really long, uh, slow process into our design thinking. So the design could be a more, um, a more thorough system and also it's like a more speculative design. So that's it. That cool. is my design for last year. Thank you so much. No, I think that's really also really great to hear, particularly um, the thing that you mentioned about, uh, you know, obviously narrative drawing and illustration is such a big theme of the studio, but the fact that you're um, really working hard on those two aspects of being conceptual, being experimental, but then also grounding it in things that are very real and very kind of pertinent to the issues that that you're we're facing today to do with our landscapes and environment so I think that's really great to hear thank you so much both um so maybe I'll just stop sharing now 
and we'll just turn to the to the q and a can i see the q and a maybe we we don't actually have any questions maybe we have done such a good job in answering all of your questions um or maybe you were kind of waiting till now please do use this opportunity to ask anything you know about portfolio the admissions process that's typically the questions we get um but also you know feel free to ask ruby and annette anything about the studio environment or their experiences their kind of route here you know or what they're hoping to do afterwards um this is really we'll use the remainder of the session to to kind of answer that um but oh we do have one in the chat so what does the curriculum look like for a dual degree, perhaps MLA to an M Arch? Um, we don't currently offer this um, at our school. It is something that could potentially be a future offering, um, but at the moment we aren't offering a dual degree. Um, no, so <laughs> sorry for that. Um, they, yeah, they are. There are, I think, other schools that offer a kind of LI and RIBA accredited um pathway but this will be a you'll get li landscape institute accreditation so we we do have a question for annette and ruby um yeah please do go ahead and answer so what what were your routes to studying at the bartlett <laughs> uh, so i don't have any landscape um, architecture experience. I came from a graphic design degree and I worked out in the field for a long time. So it was a really, it's a really long story, but I ended up in park management and operations and programming. And um, I kind of realized that um, park management takes a very specific person. So after about three years of that, I decided that I'd rather um, design the parks than manage the parks and kind of learn how to do that and figured it came from kind of a first person perspective. So that's kind of what brought me to the Bartlett. So for me, I actually studied in landscape architecture for my undergrad, but uh, after my like undergrad education, I worked for several years. I really want to like try to involve in the academic area again. And that's how I come into Bartlett. I think uh, it's like really different from like practice. We are in Bartlett, we are more pushing for speculative design, which is something quite different from what we have in landscape practice in real world. So uh, I think this space allowed me to do the speculative design that I really want to uh, start developing. So that's why I come to uh, Bartlett and start my master here. Brilliant. Thank you both. No, and just to say, yeah, your applications definitely stood, stood out in very different ways. And I think that's one of the amazing things about offering the MLA to um, have people get, have different people come in from different pathways um, and have this kind of conversion year where you can start to apply what you did before into this kind of route to landscape. So, yeah, how really happy to have you guys both from your different backgrounds here. Um, great. So there's someone else on the chat on the question and answer with some different questions. So what does the program emphasize in landscape architecture? What do you think distinguishes MLA from other universities? So maybe to kind of answer that from, from my perspective first. Um, I think as we've shown throughout all the projects, I think there's a really strong kind of theme of responding to the environment and ongoing issues um, in, in very different ways. So I think that's like part of the school's ethos and something that the landscape ar architecture program can propose solutions for, you know, through design. So I think that's one of our main emphasis. Um, what distinguishes it from other universities in the UK, Europe? Um, I mean, I think just to say again, you know, the Bartlett, is very design driven. Um, we are, as, as shown through the student works, we like to speculate and experiment in lots of very visual different ways. Um, we're also lucky to be part of a you know wider, more established institution of UCL, where there's lots of other faculties and departments coming together. Um, UCL has is obviously has its reputation, which draws a lot of amazing researchers, educators, academics, and students towards it. So I think, you know, having that as on your kind of CV will hopefully set you up for some some good 
future pathways. Um, but I can also throw this over to, to Ruby and Annette, you know, why did you pick the Bartlett over other places, for example? This thing is what I mentioned. I really look for like developing experimental and speculative design. And I think Bartlett is perfect environment for me to do so. So like when I'm like looking to different school, I like particularly want to like focus in, in that area. And I feel like lucky that I have a chance to like develop my interest here. Yep. Yeah. And I think um, in terms of like emphasis on like within the program, it's whatever you're interested in. Like all the tutors are really open. So it's not just speculative work. Like there's very like practical kind of like projects as well. So I just wanted to kind of mention that as well. Yeah. It's like whatever you kind of come in with, they're going to kind of take you and run with that and kind of push you in that direction. Yeah, definitely. No, that's great. Um, and then another part of this question is where are the landscape studio projects located? Do you think the program is suitable for international students? Um, so in terms of where the projects are located, those are very much um, informed by the students. So over the past years, there's been very different approaches. Some people choose to do projects which are very local and personal to them. So in their hometowns, um, others pick sites um, responding to the brief. Uh, so the brief might focus on a particular area, geographical area, or it might focus on a typology of landscapes, in which case that would make the site vary in a way. But um, as far as I'm aware, and maybe you guys can also um, confirm this, it, it's, it is kind of left in your court to an extent. So how did you pick your sites, for example? It's a bit different. So like, I think last year we were actually real, we were, we had to pick a site in London, but um, it was like a very urban kind of focused studio this year i'm in studio eight and it's completely opposite so we're actually like focused out kind of on the reaches of and i know this might actually answer another question about mm -hmm. kind of rural or like non-urban landscapes but we're actually focused on like a very suburban kind of part of the uk the of us have the same site which is actually also kind of an interesting opportunity and challenge so um three different perspectives kind of like looking at three different sites we're going to have three different designs and three different approaches. So um, that's also kind of fun. Um, yeah. So yeah. How did you pick your site, Annette? <laughs> um, for my studio, we're more driven by our own interests. So some of my classmates, they have site in Iceland and some of them is looking in Hawaii. So everybody <laughs> is driven by their own like ambition and our studio particularly uh, addressed that hoping to push us to do whatever we want so uh, I mean of course there's people like looking into London because they're first coming to London find the city itself really interesting so everybody just push for whatever they want and it's like in order like at least uh, as long as you can convince your tutor that you have an ambition and you're driving a design and I think all of them will be really supportive of the site that you chose yeah, yeah brilliant no that's a really good way to summarize it um yeah with your own interests and, and passions and then support from your tutors in that um okay maybe we'll just move on to some of the others there is one about work-life balance I mean I would say um you know the mod it can be and I'm sure students will back this up it can be intense at various periods of time uh, across the year the modules are designed to kind of overlap and start and stop at various times to give you so that not everything is running all year um you know you're kind of you have lots of lectures in the first term and you'll do lots of design experimentation and then you'll be asked to apply though that knowledge from the different modules to different assignments which are don't all have the exact same deadline so I hope that that's one way that the program's structured um but maybe you could talk a little bit about I don't know your day-to-day -day, you guys like how much time do you spend in the studio versus in a lecture and so on versus having fun of course and relaxing I think there's definitely times that are more like packed schedule especially like before the deadline everybody will be like scrammed by all the assignments like you will be yeah you will be really stressful but there's also time that you can be more relaxed just think about the design also walking in the city like relax there's I mean that is the dynamic of being a student the yeah. life that you have to <laughs> try to live in yeah 
yeah, I think it's just like kind of time management kind of practices and like you'll figure it out kind of in the first term, like how things laid out, but like even um, like I know I have like one day a week that I don't have any kind of like class structure. So that's kind of like my free day to kind of figure things out just as an example. So it's kind of nice to like have that freedom, but like not waste it. So I like, I think both Annette and I are like around all the time, like we're in the studio all the time, but we, I think kind of just find the balance. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, the, the advice I would give is treat it like a working day. You know, you, you get up, you come in early, meet your friends for coffee, you know, arrange to have a time where you're in, um, have a proper lunch break, you know, use those hours and then have a rest in the evening. What we don't encourage is, yeah, cramming and all nighters. I think, you know, that's a kind of myth that I hope in your postgraduate degrees, you know, you, you, you would have maybe made those mistakes early on and, and now you're ready to kind of treat this like a um, in a professional environment. So yeah, hopefully that, that answers that question. Um, so what are the job opportunities in this field? I mean, so, so this, this program as it's Landscape Institute accredited, I suppose the main kind of pathway um, or, or opportunity that it offers is that you will be able to go on to work as a landscape architect. Um, and uh, follow that that kind of path. Um, other and I will say in in London and specifically, um, there is a kind of demand for really good landscape architecture graduates. I'd say it's a much um, less competitive field in that sense than something like architecture. We have feedback from professionals all the time um, who are involved with the program that there's a demand for for skills and for people graduating in this field. So I think that's obviously one kind of quite dominant option. Um, you can also go on to do PhDs or if you have an interest in teaching, um, there's many people who have come back to teach. Um, there's also people who have formed their own kind of practice, whether that's working kind of a bit more speculatively or research based. Um, and you'll hear from those people and their experiences, hopefully in the duration of the program, because there are so many people working in different ways in the landscape discipline, the tutors, the kind of lecturers that come in. Hopefully you'll be, um, yeah, exposed to a lot, a lot of those things, so. Yeah, and I'll just, can I add real quick? Yep. The tutors also that are practicing are also looking for like, um, interns and stuff like this summer so in the MLA one program you do technically have a summer um, mm -hmm. and so you can work during that time um, yeah. and so there's kind of like a nice uh, placement um, or that you can do kind of through tutors like as you build those relationships so that's yeah. kind of uh, yeah helpful definitely yeah that's a really good um, that kind of break between the year one and year two is, is one where lots of people go on to to find a work placement um, so how many graduates will enter practice each year from the Butler? I'm, I'm afraid I don't have that data, um, the ratio of graduates doing academia and practice. Um, yeah, we I, I don't hold that data, so I wouldn't be able to answer that um, exactly. Um, but by keeping in touch with our graduates, hopefully we would be able to um, form, have a better idea of that. Um, so do you choose a studio or are they assigned to you? So the studios at the beginning of the year, they each write a brief which is circulated um, to the students to kind of review and digest. And I think they still do some form of presentation as well. Yeah, and then the students will kind of pick their, put a selection of preferences and undergo a kind of informal interview process and hopefully get assigned to one of the studios that they selected um so i don't know maybe you just want to say a few words about how you decided on your studios um i know that ruby changed this year as well so maybe offer your thoughts on that yeah i think it's just it's it's like personal kind of interest i was interested in kind of like an urban design approach and the studio two last year was really focus on urban environments and also had two kind of like practicing tutors and so I knew that I could kind of like get into the field um, and like kind of get an interest in a step forward and then this year now that I kind of like felt a bit more in tune with kind of like what I was interested in switch studios to also get kind of like a different perspective 
um, which is, it's been really nice uh, to kind of like been uh, a bit more uncomfortable this year and kind of learning learning a lot of new things. A good uncomfortable. I hope. Yes, a good type of uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is like driven by by you. You choose your your students. Great. Yeah, for me, it was more a response to the brief. Like, um, like looking at a brief, I know my tutors, like they're more into a big scale and deep timeline development of design. So that's what I'm hoping for. And I respond to that. And, and the reason why I picked the same studio again this year is because I have already developed a relationship with them and they have understand the way that I'm working and how the way that I develop my project. And in this way, when I'm develop a new project for this year, everything become more smooth and they could direct me in a way that responds to the way of learning that I have uh, yeah, for, for this time. So uh, I think is a I would suggest everybody respond to the brief and choose this design studio because that is like responding to your interests and that will push you through, yeah, to a better design at the same Great. time. Yeah, thank you. We have come up to three o'clock, but because we had a slightly late start, I just wonder if we could do five more minutes. Are you guys okay to stay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we did mention, we kind of answered your question, Tatiana, I hope. Um, again, choosing your site and what you engage with is, kind of informed partially by the studio, their brief, but your own personal interests. So if you're really interested in something more urban versus something dealing with restoration, that would be a conversation between you and your, your studio um, of, as to what you choose to focus on. Um, so would the course be suitable for BSc Biological Sciences with no design background? So we don't, um, like off the bat we wouldn't say no to, to anyone like initially I think what we need to do is assess your full application so we need to see kind of what you have um, the type of material you've studied in your previous degree um, how you kind of are, are planning on applying that knowledge to your future study um, and the whole application really so we do have people without design backgrounds on, on the program at the moment. Um, so it's not to say that that's an absolute must, but there should be some evidence of being able to communicate your work visually, even if it was not a kind of purist design degree. So that's, that is what I'd recommend. So it's not, it's impossible for us to say no. Um, it, it would just involves kind of seeing where you're at and how you plan to evolve that. Um, so do you get to cover all the skills workshops or do you have to pick two or three? Maybe I'll throw that over to you guys because I'm not exactly sure how this, how that works. Um, for the skills and workshop, we have the opportunity to uh, join in all of them, like especially when we're in last year's, when uh, still we're in the COVID era, uh, era so that we need, uh, most of the stuff is online. So everybody can just join in the Zoom to participate all the workshop they're interested in. And this year now we are like having the opportunity to be in person then uh, because of the time schedule, everybody just uh, responds to the skills and workshop that they think they needed. So they are, they are like about GIS, like Rhino, and there's like a different level. So if it's like beginner level for us year two, we have already developed the skills. And so we may not attend to that session, but uh, now is more of your personal choice of uh, looking at the workshop that is provided and whether you, want to learn the skills or not yeah yeah no, that's great yeah I think because it's um not an assessed module you don't have the pressure of like having to learn absolutely everything and apply it and get graded for it so I think that's whereas in uh, some of the other Bartlett programs it, it is assessed so I think that that's what um Annette's also kind of saying as well as you you look at them you hopefully go to them and then you choose how to apply it in your own way um, great. So are students required officially to do an internship on this course? So it's not a requirement, no. Um, what I will say is for the MA program, if you are wanting to apply to that, we will expect you to have undertaken or be undertaking um, your year of work experience in a landscape architecture practice. So that's the only kind of internship requirement. For the MLA, we have lots of people who haven't done internships before and they're coming in and no, it's not a, it's not a requirement to do it while you're on the program. No. Um, so that's answered. So how long will it take if we are selected for an on how 
long will it take to know if we are selected for an online interview? So it really depends on the time of year. We get very busy with applications around February. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you can get your kind of things in order um, to apply as soon as possible uh, to kind of avoid that. Generally, I hope it would take around two or three months for the whole thing. But as I said, when we get into peak time, which is kind of February, it may take longer just because UCL is receiving so many thousands and thousands of applications. Um, but after you've had the interview, it should be relatively quick within a couple of weeks, sometimes even sooner. Um, so what medium would you recommend an application portfolio to be in? Do you have to show CAD skills? Um, it's really kind of up to you. Um, it would be great to see what skill sets you have. So just showcase what you have as best as possible, um, whether that's a fluency in CAD or 3D modeling or rendering or none of the above. Um, you know, it, we just want to see where you're at and hopefully what you're interested, talk to you about what you're interested to learn. So we will give out portfolio instructions as well, just to give you a bit of structure on the size and um, the kind of format and things like that. So once you apply, you'll you'll have those to hopefully help you structure your portfolio. Um, and then maybe this is our final question. So in what matter do you usually spend the most? I think that's an emoji with a <laughs> flying, some flying cash while being MLA students in UCL. How, do, how would you suggest international students to manage their preparation to be MLA students. Um, I mean, maybe I'll just start by saying there there's different approaches to this. So again, depending on if if you're talking about the actual medium and the methods of which you're working and if that's expensive, um, you know, doing stuff digitally versus fabricating a lot of stuff versus buying expensive paper again we leave that up to the students I don't think anyone would ever be told you must spend money on this thing um, so so it really depends on the type of work you want to do there are various grants and bursaries and things that if you're interested in viewing those and seeing what's available to you you know things like hardship um, we can also contact me and we can I can put you in touch with stuff like that um, but how you how you suggest to international students to manage their preparation I mean I think it just depends on, yeah, the individual and your circumstances. Um, I mean, without putting you on the speed or if you're on the spot, I don't, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this from a student's perspective, but no pressure if not. Um, for, for me, I, I prepare myself in terms of develop my own interests. Yeah. So I come into master with an idea of what I wanna achieve. I think that is the best way to prepare myself as a student, it's like mm -hmm. especially it is a master degree. So everybody like hopes that as a student, you will be like able to develop your own interest in design or in yeah. landscape architecture. So I prepare myself with an idea of what I want to pursue. Yeah, here. great. Because it's, spe it's specialist, isn't it? it you know, you've, you've kind of done the basics in your undergraduate and the more general knowledge. And now it's yeah, it's up to you to kind of have that vision of what you want to do. Yeah, how did you kind of prepare yourself for, for postgraduate study, Ruby? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of work to get here. I will say that, like, I'm not going to lie. It's it's not an easy thing to, like, move to a new place that you're not familiar with. Um, but I personally have found that it's just I just would never I would not go back and change it for the world so um I would say like yeah it's challenging but it, I, I would my own opinion is that it is worth it in the end and I think that the experience that I've had here at the Bartlett is unlike any experience I would have had if I would have chosen a school that might have been closer to home so great well that is an amazing point to finish <laughs> on thank you so much um so I think um, we kind of, yeah, have, have the hour now. So thank you to, so much to everyone who attended. Um, we will be placing this recording on the perspective page. Um, so please do, if you want to watch it back or, or send it on to anyone, please do. Um, otherwise, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Ruby and Annette today. I'll let them get back to their studio work. <laughs> I know I've kind of dragged them in for this, but hopefully they provided you a really good um, 
student perspective as well and if you have any questions please get in touch with us about with me not them with me about the applications process and yeah we we really hope to receive your application so thank you so much everyone thanks a lot <laughs>